Yo dudes, what's up? This is Planet Keith, I'm Planet. No, I'm not. <laughs> Who am I? I'm Mrs. Keith and this is Keith. No, you're Mrs. Planet, I'm Keith. All oh, right. <laughs> right, uh, got that out of the way. So today we're going to answer 30 questions about food. This is, um, oh, what's it called? Da! The Crazy Food Channel Challenge. The Crazy Food Challenge. I don't know. Anyway, it's a thing. Um, he knows amongst what he's the doing. small channel movement and um, <laughs> where you know we're trying to help lots of little channels that have got less than or fewer than 1,000 subscribers um, including Planet Keith so uh, so what you have to do is so what you have to do is answer the 30 questions and then tag three other channels and I was tagged by Chris the Butcher and friends yay now, I couldn't be bothered to write questions down, so Chris said he would call me on this new, this old video phone that he picked up at Dalden Market. He says it's brilliant, but there's just one problem with it. It makes you sound like you're drunk. Um, so, with that <laughs> That's out the, the way... That's the best excuse I've ever had. That's what he said. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. Right, question one. Right, question number one. What food would you eat every day? Cheese. Cheese on toast. Cheese, any way I can get it, cheese. I love cheese. You'd just get all bunged up if you just had cheese. I don't cheese. care. Cheese on toast, you need your fibre. See, I'm a health conscious eater. Right. Cheese. What was yours? Cheese on toast. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> right, question number two. What is your favourite restaurant? We don't do restaurants these days, do we? But I'm determined. There's this place in town called Caravanserai. That's another question. And they do street food. Oh, well, you said favourite restaurant. He said favourite restaurant. Well, it can't be your favourite until you've actually been there. No, it makes me happy. I go past it on the bus every day. And it's, it's gorgeous. I'll have to get Keith to post a picture. Honestly, it looks great. And I've seen the menu and I've talked to the people. And you order it in the street... And then you go upstairs to the restaurant and you could take your own bottle. This is advertising. It is, isn't it? It's just... I like everything about it. And one day I'm going to get to eat there. Yeah, no. So I'm okay. have Middle right. Eastern food. What's my favourite restaurant? I don't know. Neither do I. So where would you like to go from the ones you've seen? What's grabbed your fancy? Well, oh. in Leeds. Um, oh, there's things like Bundobust and Cat's Pyjamas and... Uh, things like that. So why um, do they appeal? Because uh, they're cheap and popular and they're not massive chains and they do real food. So what kind of food do they do? Um, I think they're both Indian. Oh. And at least one of them is vegetarian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, oh, actually, yeah, no, there's a Japanese restaurant as well. There's a Japanese restaurant I've seen. I fancy that. Uh, question number three. What city has the best food you have ever had? Uh, most of the restaurants we ever went to were before we came back to England. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know if that means the best, you know, sort of national cuisine or whatever, or, or the best individual restaurant. I've had absolutely fantastic food in restaurants in a lot of different cities. So, I know some cities have a real food culture, because Leeds is developing one now. They've got a sort mm. of street area, a food sort of kitchen area. Yeah. But no, I've had great food in lots of different places. Uh, yeah, in, in the UK, outside of London, I would say probably Liverpool has, you know, dozens of really amazing eateries, um, mm. isn't it? So yeah. yeah. If you're ever in Madrid, what's that place where we had, was it the Ethiopian restaurant? Oh Lord. You, um, he remembers names, I, I remember food. I'm not going to remember that one, but yeah, yeah. But it's near that very, very fine hostelry. Which one? <laughs> She'll there kill are so you. many. She'll kill you if you don't remember. <laughs> The Triscoll? Yes. It's not near the Triscoll. It is. No, it's, it's right just, the other, yeah, it's it's just the down the road from the it's Triscoll. The <laughs> it's an Ethiopian restaurant and they bring Malatania. food. 
Yeah, the, oh yeah, Malasanya. And they, they bring you food in this uh, woven coloured basket and it's got this extraordinary lava bread. Is that right? It's like, but it's it's flat. Injera, they call that. It's made Injera. from teff flour and it's like uh, it's a very thin sort of spongy thing. Mm. A bit like a Staffordshire oat cake. And you, get, and you get this mix of all these different things to eat with it and it's just, the food is marvellous. Yes. Yeah, it was good. Question number four. What would you get on a sub? I know this one. Claustrophobia. <laughs> I actually had a sub at Subway a while back. Okay. Don't usually, no, I don't usually, you know, you know what you said about chains? Yeah. Yeah, but I went into Subway in town and, uh, oh, I had all sorts. So basically everything. Yeah, I think the only two times that I've had subs, that's what I've done. It was just everything. Mm. Uh, which probably isn't the greatest thing because it's just this huge mishmash of flavours that don't really go together. Never mind. Number five. What do you get on a pizza? Cheese. Right, number six. Shut up. Is there a food you have always... So, to number five, <laughs> I like seafood pizza and quattro stagioni. Uh, I would always try and get a steak on it, but <laughs> they, they tend not to do that. What was number six? Um, right, number six. Is there a food you have always wanted to try? One food that you've always wanted to try? Uh, I don't know, to be honest. I just enjoy it as it comes. I think, I th I, you know, if you spend your entire life thinking, uh, I wish I could try that, why don't you just try it? And then you'll, you know, cross it off your bucket list. Um, but one that, one that came up recently was uh, my friend in the west of Ireland uh, who used to deliver exotic foodstuffs to restaurants like lobsters and things like that uh, and wagyu beef. He said, um, I should do a video about abalone. And I've kind of heard of this, but I never actually knew what it was until I, I looked it up. And he'd, he'd only suggested it because he'd said, he'd said he'd, he was driving near his farm and went past an abalone farm and so they're online and they deliver all over the world and what it is it's uh, it's a sea snail but it's enormous it's like you know it's mm. like a little football or a, a baseball or something i've heard um, of abalone shells i've yeah. never actually thought about what lives in them so uh depending on price i suspect they're a bit pricey um i quite like to try that okay yep number seven your worst restaurant experience? Mine was, and um, well, you were there as well. Uh, it was in Bristol, and it was a gathering of clans. Mrs. Planet comes from a very large clan, and um, so it was like three generations of, you know... Mm, clan members. Yeah, a couple of dozen people, and we, we booked into this gastro pub that looked really good on its website, and the menu oh, looked great yeah. and everything. And... Um, you know, just basically booked the entire first floor, which was the, the dining area. And um, all sat down, started having a drink, and placed our orders, and waited, and, and waited, waited. And waited. Did we wait a bit longer? We did. Because um, we, you know, half of my clan's in catering, or has been, so we understand things can happen, so we're pretty patient. Yeah, anyway, so <laughs> one of them went into the kitchen and there was this guy just having a total meltdown, all on his own, trying to prepare from scratch 24 meals, many of which involved pizza dough that hadn't been pre-made and had to be made and risen and not a chance, not happening. Um, and it turned out the previous chef had walked out, at giving them no notice a few days previously. Oh. And this, this guy was brought in from an agency and just chucked in the deep end and oh crikey yeah. so in the end we um had words with the management paid for the drinks and uh enough said and left my worst ever restaurant experience was during an absolutely marvelous you must try this holiday in jordan we got we we hired a car and we just drove from point to point down through Jordan. Are we still on the worst? This is the worst. I can remember it. And we went to, and so, I mean, 
you know, I really like Arab food, but I tried this thing. Was it? It wasn't mansaf. Was it, it was mansaf. It was mansaf. Which I remembered the kind it. Of, bad. Um, Yorkshire. Well, it's not Yorkshire pudding. It's <laughs> it's the kind of national dish of uh, Jordan. And um, it's cooked in yogurt, isn't it? Which I love. It's not regular yogurt, but it's it. Well, it's lamb. It's like a leg of lamb or a shank um, coated in this yogurty stuff and um, served, you know, slow cooked and served with a pile with no, with some flatbread underneath it so all the juices soak into it and a pile of rice on top. And, um, and that sounds, you know, that's right up my street. Yeah. But I, I remember this because I, I had about two mouthfuls of it and I actually picked up the plate and just moved it and put it onto the empty table behind me so that I wouldn't have to look at it or smell it or anything. So I'm just hoping that that was a bad day because... Yeah, it'd be a shame if your national dish is... Um, well, it can't be, so I don't well, know. Well, I know, yeah. But um, that, was, that was the worst ever meal, but yeah. apart from that, I absolutely love Arabic food. But what, what made it worse was that, you know, it was absolutely number one on my bucket list of things to try in Jordan. And we spent the first week just looking for this this dish and it wasn't anywhere. Nobody was doing it in restaurants. Mm. Um, so, and, uh, well, we found out later it was because it's, it's kind of considered peasant food. It would be like, you know, the Ritz serving bubble and squeak, although they probably do do that. Um, and, you know, so it was looked down on and, and restaurants just ignored it. So, yeah. Mm. Anyway, moving on. <clears throat> Question number nine. What is the one food you just fail to ma just fail making? What? What is the one food you just fail at making? Oh, to be honest, it's so long since I've cooked, I can't remember. <laughs> and I'm a cooking genius, so I can do everything. He's a cooking genius. I, <laughs> I, I, I do. I, sure. I'm sorry. <clears throat> I do sometimes have a problem with making things rise. Cakes and that. And Yorkshire puddings. <laughs> You've broken it. <laughs> Come back, Chris, baby. Name your least favourite food. My least favourite food, Swede. I knew he was going to say that. And or turnip, both of them. Mm. Yeah, probably the same. And Brussels sprouts. Come on. <laughs> Right, number 11. Raw or cooked veggies? Raw or cooked veggies? Cooked. Raw or when he cooks them. <laughs> I love veggies. I really do. Number 12. How do you like your steak? Steak. Rare. Rare? Mm. Medium rare. Mm. You don't like it rare. No, I do. Because I used to, I used to drink it. I used to have it well done. Sorry, there's a flock of magpies up there. I'm busy watching the magpies in the trees. Um, yeah. No, I like it rare now. Okay. Yeah. Do you like? Do you enjoy cooking or baking better? Do you enjoy cooking or baking better? Oh, I love the palaver of baking, and I like the fact that it's very orderly. You sort of you focus on doing one thing. And then you put it in the oven, and you have a cup of tea, and then it's ready, and then that's it. Whereas with ba whereas normal cooking takes coordination, and I'm not very good at having several pans on the go at the same time. All right. I, I don't really distinguish between the two. Um, I, I enjoy both of them equally. I suspect it's about cakes and buns and bread. Uh, number 14. What's your favourite fa fast food place? Ah. We don't... We don't really do fast food places, except the fish and chip shop round the corner. I was going to say. That's my... Midgley's. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a, a really excellent fish and chip shop. Yeah. Yes. Could be expensive as well. Mm. But worth it. Uh, number 15. Name a food place you wish was close to you. Uh, that place in London that our son took us to. We went down for his uh, his second graduation. Oh. <laughs> and and we, uh, instead of going to the graduation, we just all went to a restaurant. <laughs> 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 and 
And it was and great, wasn't it? It was. It was great. It was Hawksmoor, which Hawksmoor. is a small chain of um, steak restaurants, and these guys can really cook a steak. Mm, um, and I the think dessert. they've opened in Manchester. Oh, have they? Yeah. Um, uh, mm, yeah, it was great. And it's, I don't know what the Manchester one's like, obviously, but the, that one, it was sort of um, like brick vault. Yeah. It was, was it actually below ground or was it just yeah, worked? Yeah. yeah, I think it was a former brewery okay. in Seven Dials. So um, Hawksmoor in London. Mm. Yeah. And the uh, favourite food place that I wish was closer is Leeds Market. Thank you. Because, I mean, it's only three miles away, but it's a right palaver getting there. And parking in Leeds is just, yeah. And, um, well, I, yeah. What are you doing? She's counting down the magpies. Seven magpies now. Then she's going to sing a song. No, she's not. Ultimate favourite dessert? The one that's in front of me. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Uh, but I love a really sharp uh, lemon meringue. And um, ditto uh, cheesecake. But I don't like them really, really sweet. And I like a crunchy base. <sighs> yeah. I like that as well. <laughs> Number 17. What food would you gravitate to at a party? <laughs> the most expensive. <laughs> the caviar. The lark's tongues in aspic. Failing that, because we don't get invited to those kinds of parties anymore. Um, the chicken drumsticks. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I, I, I tend to gravitate to the things that we don't tend to have at home. You know, it's like, ooh, fancy one of those. But as to what they might be, can't remember. Number 18, fair food to eat at Christmas. Fair food to eat at Christmas. Well, our son. <laughs> Makes a damn fine Christmas cake. <laughs> oh, yes, he does. Yeah, Christmas cake and Christmas pudding. You know how you never, I don't know about you, but we never, ever get to the Christmas pudding on Christmas Day, which just means that we have to have it over a matter of a few days afterwards. Yeah. yeah. And um, I think my favourite is Port and Stilton. Oh, right. <laughs> and turkey leftovers. Mm. Ooh, and parsnips. I just love parsnips at Christmas. Yeah. And your, those little sausages you did, the, uh, was it Devils on Horseback? No, oh, Pigs, in, the pigs in Blankets. Pigs in Blankets, yes. Oh, Devils on Horseback is, um, my approval. Number 19, what's the first food that comes to mind now? Bread. Bacon. <laughs> uh, number 20, do you have any weird food habits no i'm perfect <laughs> actually i don't like to eat the corners off uh, the, the crust of sliced oh, bread dear. now I, i've realized this is obviously a childhood thing about not wasting anything also he's a good cook so i if nobody's looking i will sort of just sort out all the bit drops of gravy on the plate i can, but i cannot waste food i can be eating something i don't like and I will eat it, but I'll eat it first. So I don't have to taste it after that. Plan. Strategy. <laughs> Question 21 is, and that is, what holiday is your favourite for food? What holiday is your favourite for food? Christmas. Yeah. Because we don't do Thanksgiving here. Or, you know, going to Greece or Turkey or um, the Nordic countries. Those kind of holidays would be good. <laughs> <laughs> Number 22, what's one food you'll never try? What's one food you'll never try? Insects. Yeah, I was thinking probably that. But I think, you know, when you look at things like crickets, they just look like crusty versions of shrimps. So, yeah, I don't know. I think insects is, um, oh, tripe. I don't, I don't think I'll... Want to try tripe? I think I might have tried tripe in Spain. Mm. Tripas. Tripas. Yeah. Yeah. No. Mm. I've had pig's ear. That was pretty horrible as well. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, 
actually, you know when you said abalone before? Yeah. And I just thought, you know, overfishing, because... And then you said, oh, it's abalone from an abalone farm. So I thought, fair enough. But I think anything that's, you know, that I know to be endangered or is not kept right. So no, that would be it. Your best friend's favourite food? Babe. What's your best friend? Best Who's my food? best friend? What's your, be what's your favourite food, darling? Oh, <laughs> you're my best friend. So it's cheese on toast. <laughs> It's uh, salad. It's <laughs> cheese, you nana. <laughs> Your favourite food is salad. Um, well, it depends on what kind of salad. Depends on what's in it. Yeah. I love those mixed leaf leaf salads. And uh, I made a salad niçoise the other day. That's good. good. Number twenty-four. What's the best thing your mum makes? Well, oh. past tense, but peas pudding, um, which I used to hate when I actually lived at home. But uh, once I left and, and went back, I actually tried some and I loved it. So every time I went yeah. back thereafter, there was always a big bowl of peas pudding for me. <laughs> <laughs> There's 10 magpies up there. Well, they don't care about anyway, magpies. 10 magpies up there. Um, buns. She used to make the most beautiful golden Was that the Sarah buns. Lee packet buns? No, no this, this was the proper ones and they, they'd just rise to a little point and they'd be just golden brown and you'd, they'd come out of the tin and you could smell them and they'd have the little sort of shell marking from the tin base at the bottom mm. and oh yeah she was oh my mother was a terrible cook but <laughs> she oh she made wonderful buns. I never knew that. Oh god, she was a terrible cook. Yes, she did. No, I know she was a I was terrible cook. Say. <laughs> I, never, I never knew there was one thing she could actually do. God yeah. bless her. Oh, and she known she did good scones as well, sultana scones. But I really liked. Oh, I thought her buns were marvellous. <coughs> Shut up. <laughs> hey, there's a crow up there now. What's your favourite way of cooking eggs? Fried till they're crispy on both sides. I like the way they do them in Spain is you drop your egg into really hot fat so it immediately cooks on the bottom and it bubbles up and then you and then I flip it over and have it on both sides. She's he hates it. I love it. <laughs> yeah, well I mean that's not food, that's a building material. I um I, I like yeah, fried eggs um with a, a golden runny yolk. But the white around the edge of it has to be properly set as well, because otherwise, no. <laughs> yeah, I thought you'd have well, boiled. To, yeah, I do, I do like a, a perfectly soft boiled egg, which I still haven't mastered. <laughs> Number 26, name your favourite resto that is closed down. Oh, yeah. Oh, In, oh crikey. What's that, that building? What town are we in? In Madrid. <laughs> <clears throat> the, the, the Franco one. <laughs> I have no memory Plaza anymore. Plaza de España. It's slightly no, worrying. Um, no, no. Edificio de... Edificio de... Fascismo. No. <laughs> no, what's it called? There's a railway station named after it. <sighs> and you're thinking of Tartar, it's not a Tartar. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Anyway, anyway the old, the old Franco building. It, it's you know, world leaders got a bit of an issue with their uh, egos. They have to build something as tall as possible. So the this is the Franco building above the yeah, it's above the square. Yeah, Plaza de España. Plaza de España. Yeah. So what was the restaurant that closed down? Because we. Used I don't to... know. Yes, you do. <laughs> yes, you do. Because it was marvelous, and it was the the two. Oh, around the corner from the Andes. Andes. El Rincón de Andy. El Rincón de... Oh, sorry, Andy. The, yeah. cor the corner of Andy. Yeah, El, El Rincón de Andy. It was, it was absolutely flipping marvellous, but they started building work beside Plaza de España, so they emptied all the offices that had been his passing trade. Killed restaurant. Yeah. And it was, it was fabulous, wasn't it? Yeah. We Tex -Mex. went there a lot. Mm, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the wine as well. And the occasional pie made by me. <laughs> um, <clears throat> okay, my favourite restaurant, what has closed down, is um, was in Liverpool, 
at the bottom of Matthew Street. It's called the Armadillo Tea Rooms. Oh yeah, you proposed which, to me there. Shush, he did. Used to <laughs> used to be a sort of ordinary cafe during the day and then transformed into a posh restaurant at night. And they had soft toilet seats. Do you remember those? Yeah, I do. <laughs> um, yes, I, I, I proposed to a, 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 a just just before a pudding yeah, came and it quite put her off. Yes, <laughs> like, right, I've spent enough. I'll ask her to marry me, and then she won't even think about pudding. You rotten so and so. Number twenty-eight, twenty-seven. Do you like your bread, light or dark? Toasted. He's talking about toast. Oh, is that what he said? Bread. I know, but he's, it's the it's the the effect of the video phone on his sobriety. No, I, I no 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 no. I, I think I think he means. Do you like wholemeal, or do you like? Okay, you answer that one. I'll answer sliced. toast. Uh -huh. <laughs> I like most breads. Um, yeah, I said before, didn't I? Bread. That was, that was the first word that came into my head. Uh, okay, I like my toast. Golden brown. Texture like some. Mm, I was going to say that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Number 28. Do you like spicy food? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Um, Not hot spicy, but tasty spicy. Mm, yeah, yeah. I was just thinking, you know those those killer macho curries? It's like, what is the point? You can't taste anything Bindalo. else. Mm. Number, number 29, do you like seafood? Yes. No, I love it. <laughs> what he said. Yeah, I love it. And, and we don't actually, you know, get enough because we haven't got a fishmonger nearby and they still haven't moved Leeds Market into our village. <laughs> so, yeah. Number 30. First food that comes to mind that is green. Peas. 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 And I was saying about asparagus. Peas. Asparagus. It's not really, but I got some. Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah, we had sugar snap peas in that salad the other day, and oh, they're beautiful. I can eat them out of the packet. I could actually eat those raw. Mm. But yeah. Well, mm. you meant to. Uh, anyway, okay, that's it. That's it. We've done it. Uh, uh, uh. That was more fun than I expected. <laughs> yes, it was. It was lots of fun, boys and girls. Yes. Um, so, and now I've got I to edit it. You've got to, to <laughs> enjoy. Um, I, think, I think he wants you to like it and love it. And no, 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 no. Stuff. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so, but also I've got to tag three people. So, um, to also do this, it doesn't matter if you don't or if you've already done it. But um, uh, so we've got Pete Thomas, the Lazy Cook Show, and we've got Moose Down Under, who uh, I don't think is actually actively part of this small channel thing, but he's got a channel um, with about 800 subs, and it's all about camping and, you know, living out in wild and a bit of cooking at home. Uh, and it's interesting. So have a look at that. And also Joel Hardy, again, not a cook. Um, just a general vlogger and um, yeah so there you go right yeah if you liked it like it give us a like subscribe um, you can make donations on McKeith Cook's page channel uh, and also become a patron and stuff like that so I guess for what yeah, thanks for watching <laughs> I've caught it off him <laughs> uh, uh, thanks for watching and we love you all and Thank you for watching. Bye. Yeah, see you next time. Ciao. <laughs>